We're building a check splitting app, which means users have to be able to enter the amount of their check, the actual cost of their food, how many people are sharing the cost, as well as what amount of tip they want to leave. Now, hopefully you can see that means we have to add three properties using at state because there are three pieces of data we want users to enter into our program, three live choices they're going to make. So we're going to start off by adding these three properties to our content view in contentview.swift. We'll say at state private var check amount is 0.0. Then at state private var number of people equals two. And at state private var tip percentage equals 20. So we have a default of zero for our check amount, if food's free by default. We uh, have two people and we have a tip percentage of 20. They're all, I think, sensible defaults. We don't know how much checks are gonna come to, so zero is fine to begin with. Assuming two people is probably fine a lot of the time. They can change it, of course. And a 20% tip, it's fair enough for a starting point. Of course, some folks prefer to leave other amounts of tips, perhaps more or if things weren't so good, less. And so we want to have a list of predetermined tip sizes they can choose from, 10, 15, 20, 25, or zero. And so we're gonna add a fourth property here, which is not modifiable, it won't be at state. It'll be a constant list. So I'll say let tip percentages be an array of 10, 15, 20, 25, and zero. So the options they can choose from. Now we're gonna build up our form step by step, starting with a text field where users can enter their value of their check. We're gonna start with what you know already, text build with some text, but then build on it because it won't quite work right as you'll see. Let's go to the current hello world stuff in here. And instead we're going to say there's a form with a section inside. And inside there is going to be uh, a text field prompting them for the amount, and a text of check amount. Now that's not gonna work. It's not gonna work at all. I can play in a second when I press build, there we go. I can't do that. It's saying we can't handle a double here because users will type a string in, type in text in their keyboard. So do I expect text fields to handle text, unsurprisingly. We could allow that here. We could make check amount into an empty string by default, then do the conversion by hand as needed, but there's a better approach. We can leave that as a double. And instead, we're going to pass our double to this text field using value dollar check amount, then add a third parameter to say, actually, this thing is a currency. Expect money to be entered here. And we do that by saying format is dot currency and it wants a code string so we'll specify usd for us dollars and that will build cleanly that's an improvement it'll like that very much and the preview you can see now it says dollar 0, 0.00 so it knows it has two decimal places that's an improvement but we can do even better you see we're telling swift ui here actually you have to enter this as US dollars, USD, but over 95% of the world's population don't use US dollars. And so forcing them into USD by default isn't a nice choice here. A better solution is to ask the system, hey, um, do you know what the cu currency code for the user is? And it might be USD still, could be CAD for Canadian dollars, AUD for Australian dollars, GBP for British pounds, JPY, Japanese yen, who knows what? or it might not currently have a value. The user hasn't told iOS which currency they want to use. And so the best option here is not to force USD, but instead to say this, locale.current.currency code, and then nil coalesce down to USD. Now, locale is a massive struct that comes to us built into iOS and it handles things, everything to do with the user's region settings, what calendar style they use, how they separate thousands uh, in long numbers, how they measure things, is it metric or not? And in this case, we can read the currency code right here, and if they haven't provided one, 
if the system doesn't know what they like, we just fall back to USD as a sensible default. So at least we have something to work with. So far our code creates a scrolling entry form with exactly one section inside, which in turn contains one row, our text field. As a reminder, when you create text fields, the first thing here is a placeholder. So if there's no text in there, it'll say amount in gray text. The second parameter here, the value, is a two-way binding dollar check amount bound back to our double. This is a read and write value. Then we have the format for the text field. Otherwise, Swift won't know to do the double. It doesn't realize it's currency. So we're saying, actually, this is a, not just a regular double, it's a double storing some kind of money. Now, one of the wonderful things about the at state property wrapper is that it automatically watches for changes. And when something happens, it'll automatically reinvoke the body property. That's a fancy way of saying it'll reload our UI to reflect the current program state. It's a fundamental feature of how Swift UI works. To demonstrate this, we could add a second section to our form with a text view showing the value of check amount. So we can say section text check amount. And again, we're gonna tell it has a format of dot currency with that exact code again. So it's locale dot current dot currency code nil coalescing USD like that. And you'll see there's now two of these fields appearing. It does almost exactly the same thing as our text field. It asks Swift UI to format the number as a currency using whatever currency code the user has in the system. Later on, you're gonna meet more of these formatters. We'll have uh, percentages, for example, that they're very, very helpful. But for now, I'd like you to press Command R to build and run your code. I'm using an iPhone 13 Pro simulator here. You can use it if everyone pleases you, it doesn't really matter. I know you can see it running on a real device right here. And all being well, we should hopefully see it run. Any moment now. There we go. This first one's our text box. I can select that. And then this uh, text area here appears. I can go ahead and delete that and say I want to have uh, three, five, return. And you see, as I was typing, in the top area, it filled in the bottom area as well. It knew exactly to reflect the two values automatically and immediately as I typed. And this happens because our text field here has a two-way binding to check amount. It reads it, but also writes it back. Check amount uses at state, which watches for changes in its value. And when it changes, Swifty while will reinvoke the body property. It'll reload our UI, and therefore the text view down here will get the updated value of check amount. Now our final project won't just show check amount down there, that's a bit easy, but it's good enough for now. Before we move on though, I do want to address one important problem. As you probably saw when I was typing in here, the keyboard that appears is actually the regular alphanumeric keyboard, which is not helping anybody. Um, it's annoying, it's not necessary. You've got to press one, two, three to get the actual numbers up. Yeah, it's not great. Fortunately, text fields have another modifier we can apply. We can say, I want a different kind of keyboard to what the default is. In this case, we can say either number pad or decimal pad for handling numbers. Both of those will show naught to nine. So you can have numbers going in there. But decimal pad also adds a decimal point, a dot. And so users can say 32 bucks 50, for example, rather than just whole numbers. And so below the text field, I'm gonna add a modifier. I'll press a keyboard type dot decimal pad like that. Now you might see I added a line break before the modifier. See, I press return here and then tabbed in one level to do keyboard type. Uh, that's intentional. It's not required, but it is intentional. It just helps you see which modifiers are attached to which view. Now, if you go ahead and press Command R now, this should look better. So here we go. I'll select it now, and we get just this. So I can now I'm going to do text only numbers like that. So much much better. Now, as a warning for you, the number pad and decimal pad here 
show on our soft keyboard, the on-screen keyboard, the numbers zero through nine plus optionally decimal point, but that doesn't stop the user from trying to enter invalid text. If they have a hardware keyboard, which you can get on your Mac by pressing uh, Command Shift K, they can go ahead and type letters freely into there. Similarly, they can go to a different application, copy text from there, and then paste it into this box if they want to. That's okay though. When they finish with that, Swifty Wild go, nope, sorry, you've got to be a currency and remove the invalid data. So it isn't dangerous, it'll just filter out things automatically.